Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for being with us attending this webinar. This webinar, the cooperation among organizations to tackle breast cancer is an important issue that we have to talk more with members. It's a disease that affects women all over the world. Now, uh, I would like to thank very much all the panelists and the President Catherine and Giuseppe, Vice President Membership Giuseppina, who are very far in Taiwan and accepted Taiwan. to be with us. Okay. And now, uh, before President Catherine talk, I would like to invite Claudia Pirani to bring some information about translations. Okay, please, Claudia Pidani. Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening. It's an honor to be here with, with all of you. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, give you some guidance how to add the subtitles. Here on the top, on the bottom line of your computer, who is on the computer? and also works if you are on the mobile, okay? Following the same instructions, you are gonna see this button, show captions or legendas in Portuguese, okay? When you click there, you're gonna show you a whole path like this. So the webinar will be in a speaking language English. Don't move it, okay? Only to see, only to you to check it. The one that we are gonna change is the caption. Ou, in Portuguese, vai aparecer tradução. You click here. Você vai clicar no botãozinho aqui do lado, vai aparecer essa pop-up. So, after, what you're gonna do is to change my caption language. This is the language that you are going to choose. Or in Portuguese, will be tradução. If you click, quando você clica no tradução, vai aparecer a sua língua, a nossa língua. E aí, vai aparecer essa pop-up do lado para você colocar o português. Or Italian. Or Spanish. Ok? Don't choose my speak language because all the webinar will be in english so choose only caption language for portuguese italian spanish you can choose on this pop-up also you need to wait a little bit because we have some delay to start the translation what you're gonna do what you're gonna uh, happens is you are going to see our, uh, subtitles or legendas embaixo no seu vídeo, okay? Another important thing, we are not going to have the chat. So if you want to make questions to the, our panelists after their, their presentation, also you need to click here in questions and answers, okay? And then you're gonna show you a pop-up and you can write down there, okay? If anybody needs uh, a little more help or anything you needed, you can contact by, chat, by question and answer or on the WhatsApp, okay? Enjoy. Margarida, you are mu muted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Claudia, thank uh, you so much you so for much this explanation. explanation. And uh, I, uh, I hope it helps everyone who doesn't speak English or can uh, try this artificial 
intelligent. Okay, now please, I would like to invite Dr. Catherine Boshart, our international president. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. The background here is a bit treachery because I'm not speaking from San Francisco, but I'm speaking from Taipei. I welcome you all to this webinar. It is one of the first webinars BPW International is organizing in the field of health. But as we all know, breast cancer is an incredibly important field. It's an incredibly important illness. We have to be aware of it. We have to do the controls regularly. And I think it's absolutely time that we uh, speak about this topic. I don't want to do a presentation, but I would like to quickly talk about an initiative my hometown did, which I used heavily. And I think it's a good example how to bring women to go to the exam, to the exam, the regular exam of the breast and to avoid breast cancer in a very serious and incurable stage. In my hometown, Freiburg, we had an initiative that all women over 50 get a free access to a mammography every second year. And you get a letter from the Cancer Prevention Center which tells you, please, it's time again, you should go to your prevention uh, exam, take contact with this and this and this and this institute. And you don't pay anything. The costs are paid by the state. And that lasts from 50 to 75. And of course, when you are over 75, you should even so take care of you and go regularly, but it is, a, I think it's a big help. Our scientific person who persons who are talking tonight might, I don't know, talk about it, but it is certainly discovering and helping to discover hidden uh, breast cancer, which would not be discovered and help save life. Lives. I hope you enjoy this uh, interesting webinar and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much to all the panelists. And it's not an entertainment, but it's a very interesting topic. Have a very good panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, so much President Catherine, President Catherine, for your message. I think it's very important you as president bring this message for our members and women for all over the world. Prevention is very important. And uh, today we are talking a little about it and bring information and all treatments available in many countries. Now we are going to start our First block to talk, to present the pro project from DPW Madrid and Universidade Complutense Madrid. Please, I'd like to call Dr. Dolores Serrano. Dr. Dolores Serrano is prof professor at University Complutense de Madrid. She, she is a researcher on immunology and also is uh, very committed to women's gender equality. And uh, uh, now, please, Dr. Dolores. Thank you very much, Margarita, for this introduction, this kind of introduction. I'm coming here from Universidad Complutense de Madrid to show this partnership that we have started with VPW and our university 
to show you what we can do for women and especially for breast cancer. I would like to share my screen to show fewer slides. Mm. One second. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So then I yeah. I will go ahead. In this partnership, uh, we have started working with VPW, with Paz Martin, the, our president in VPW Madrid, and also the VPW International Standing Committee on Business, Trade and Technology, initially to empower women at the academic level. Even though I'm coming from a pharmaceutical background and we have a lot of women at the university, still there are so many disparities, gender disparities or inequalities, especially in the top level because ex still exists this glass ceiling that we need to break. So thank you to VPW. We have started a mentoring program that helps PhD students and master students to develop further their abilities to of leadership and empowerment. So we are really helpful through this mentoring that we are organizing and we keep going for a second edition. But also now we have started a research project related to breast cancer. We are working with another two colleagues from Universidad Complutense de Madrid and Isabel Fraguas and Elena González, and three of us, we are running this project from Universidad Complutense de Madrid. But this partnership is much larger because actually we also have members from all over around the world. We have Ekaterina Lalatza, that is currently a professor at Starclyde University in Glasgow, and she is also the deputy director of Cancer Research UK Formulation Unit, so the person that is manufacturing these medicines to test it into clinical trials. And we are very grateful to Dr. Masim Fadil, that is actually the director of pharmacy of Anwar Seikal Medical City in Iran, who has provided the first amount of um, support, economical support, to initiate this partnership and this research in breast cancer. Apart from that, also, along with Dr. Anise Yamaguchi and Dr. Amani Asfur, we are really happy and excited to move forward into this partnership and to be able to, to collaborate together as they help positions that they can really change these politics that now we are having in our, in our world. And finally, but not least, thank you very much for to Giuseppe Seidita and VPW Madrid and Brazil for organizing this type of seminar. Now let's go a brief introduction about breast cancer. Breast cancer causes around 670,000 deaths globally in 2022. It's very important to highlight that also no, no. Sorry. This cancer also cures in men between 0.5 and 1%. The main problem is if you realize amongst black women, the mortality rate is much higher compared to white women. This occurs between due to several biological differences and also because of the access to these healthcare systems. It's important to highlight that since 1975 till now, there is an increase in the number of women that actually are developing breast cancers. So from one into 11 in 1975, we have moved into one in 10 in 2022. Because change, the world is changing. We have, um, we are more exposed to different chemicals, food and many other circumstances. And also it's important to highlight that the survival rates are very different around the world. In some high income countries, we can have survival rates of around 
but in other parts of the globe, this percentage is only 40%, which we need to change the access to these healthcare systems. But actually, breast cancer is much more complicated when we try to study from a biological point of view. It can affect different regions, more tactile, more globular. We can have, probably most of you, you have heard about hormonal or non-hormonal breast cancer types. If um, they can be, if they are hormonal, the treatments are different because these cells express on the surface different receptors and we can use a broader range of therapies. But in the case of triple cancer, breast, a triple negative breast cancer, they don't express the receptors on the surface and the options for treatment are more limited. The issue, apart from the breast cancer, is in about 10, 20% of the females that suffer from a breast cancer, they can develop afterwards a brain metastasis. And the problem of this brain metastasis is actually the, the poor prognosis. The survival rate is only between three to 25 months, and the treatment is much more complicated and the chances of survival much poorer. This happened, so much research going on to try to explain how cells from the breast can metastasize and can actually migrate across this blood-brain barrier that is separating our, uh, our brain from the rest of our body, and these metastatic cells are able to cross over and to develop a tumor in the brain. So this is another important area of research. In our project that we have developed with VPW, we want to focus in these hormone therapies, especially we are going to utilize a technique that is focused in a hormone, GnRH, the gonadotropin releasing hormone. This hormone can regulate the gonadotropin secretion in our pituitary glands. And the advantage is a big percentage of these cancer cells in the breast, they overexpress on their membrane receptors for this hormone, for this protein. What happens is this hormone has the ability to stop to have an anti-proliferative effect. So actually we can utilize an internal hormone that we can produce in our body to stop the growth of these cells. But what is the problem? The problem is even our bodies produces generate, the life, the, the half life in our body is very short, just between two to four minutes. So in the moment in which this hormone is secreted, only last in our body between two to four minutes. So it's not enough to actually create this inhibition effect and against these tumoral cells. And the second disadvantage, we cannot administer it orally because it degrades. It's a peptide that when we, if we administer orally, will be degraded, will be chopped in different amino acids, and it will not reach our blood in its current state. So based on these reasons, this hormone, even if we know that it's active and it can stop the growth of cancer cells, it hasn't been utilized till now in clinic. On the other side, we were thinking about how we can actually move forward and get the best out of this hormone, but in a way that could be applied for breast cancer. So we start to combine the hormone with 3D printing. In the case of 3D printing, we can um, have sort of ink that we load in our printers and we can create layer by layer a structure containing the materials that we want. So in our case, to create these 3D printed structures, we need to have materials that first either are going to be administered inside of our body, they need to be biocompatible. So we cannot cause us an allergy or a, any sort of toxicity. We have been working with cellulose nanocrystals. Actually, this cellulose is coming from, from the plants, from wood, from trunks. And if we take this material from nature and we process it, we need to do an acidic hydrolysis 
we are able to get small fragments that they can be modulated and they, be, they can be transformed into a gel matrix. What we are going to do with this gel matrix? If we move forward, this gel matrix of cellulose nanocrystals can be mixed with sodium alginate. If you think about sodium alginate, it's also a material that is coming from the seaweeds in the sea. It's complete, completely natural material, non-toxic and biocompatible. When we mix this alginate with this cellulose, we can create a material that can provide enough chemical, mechanical strength to be printable. So what is the advantages? Where we want to go with all of that? We have now three materials. We have our hormone that we know that is active against cancer, can stop this proliferation. And we have a materials, a set of materials, the alginate and the cellulose nanocrystals, that when we combine them together, they form a gel structure that if you have a look in the image, you can create like a sort of implant that could be incorporated in our bodies because the materials are not toxic and over time, they keep degrading little by little, integrating with our tissues. So our research goal, taking into account these three pieces of our puzzle, is we want to create this ink, this material that can be printed that will contain this GnRH hormone to activate specifically these receptors that are on the surface of the cancer cells to inhibit their growth and to prevent metastasis. So in order to do that, we need to create a hydrogel. A hydrogel is a material that is like a gel that contains a lot of water. This is why it's highly biocompatible. That after we have a tumor, we could implant it in our body and due to the hormone would be released to the media and prevent this metastasis. Let's have a look in this image that it will be much clearer. Imagine that you are diagnosed with a breast cancer and the surgeon proposes you the option to do a resection of this tumor. And then in most of the cases, after the resection, women need either radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Why? Because when the surgeon removes the tumoral tissue, sometimes tumoral cells can be left at the site of the breast. So these tumoral cells afterwards, they can migrate to other tissues and provoke metastasis. The problem is to avoid that, the women after the surgical process really suffers from a very strong radio radiotherapy or chemotherapy to, to prevent this possibility of metastasis. So what we are proposing is after the surgical operation, the surgeon can implant exactly in the gap that has left after removing the tumor, can implant this gel matrix that will contain this hormone the gonadotropin hormone release that little by little will be implanted in the, in the same where the tumor has been removed. So if any cancer cell is left, we will have this hormone that is active and has been implanted exactly at the same point of the pressure, will release and will kill any possible cells that remain in the breast. So you prevent this metastasis in a much natural way that instead of receiving very high of radiotherapy or chemotherapy. The second advantage is after this tumor resection, normally the surgeon try to remove as much as they can. There is a um, um, sort of healing tissue, a scar that is, um, it can create lack of self-esteem in the image when they look at the mirror because really it's like a gap that is forming the breast. If in the space of the tumor we implant this gel, we have a double function. The gonadotropin release hormone will kill any remaining cancer cell. But the other two materials that we have used to create the gel, little by little, will integrate with our tissue, the remaining healthy tissue in the breast, will integrate 
And at the end, we can move on into a later stage in which the cancer cells have been eradicated and our material has allowed a new healthy tissue to grow. If we already have the scar, it's very difficult for this tissue to revert to the original position. But if we provide it with an implant that will have a slow release, we can allow a tissue regeneration occupying the space of the tumor. So this is really the main focus of this period. Also, we have in a second stage to create a model that will allow us to mimic exactly what occurs in the human body, but in a micro scale, in a much smaller scale. So we want to create this 3D printed um, microfluidic implant chip in which we can grow cells. We can have this tumor mimicking what happened in humans and we can implant it, the previous implant that I just described. So in this way, we don't need to do any uh, clinical trials. We can previously test it in these systems that are much more reproducible because they are really mimicking the tumor microenvironment. So hopefully, in our work program that we just started, along with VPW, we want to manufacture this peptide. We want to incorporate into this gel matrix to 3D print an implant that has exactly the size that the surgeon is suspected to, to resect during the operation. And also from this implant, we would like to investigate what is this degradation profile and how it can integrate within healthy tissues, but the tumoral cells will be key by this generate hormone. We expect that in a period of about one year, we, can, we could move on this project and we can tell you much more exciting results, especially from Complutense, we are very thankful, three of us, Elena González and Isabel Fraguas and me, to keep going to this partnership along with Catherine Lalatza in, in UK. As each of us can provide a different set of, of expertise and skills. So thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Dr. Dolores, thank you so much for your presentation. I think uh, your research will help a lot of women with breast cancer. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have your uh, project, your treatment available for us. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience. And uh, uh, we, I think we should talk more about your experience and advancement Okay, and it will be a pleasure. I think, yeah, I think it's very important, the advancement of your research. You are at the beginning now, and, mm -hmm. I, and this cooperation, this collaboration among other universities and researchers are very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank so, you. And thank you for the partnership be, between university and BPW. Madrid and BPW uh, all over the world. And it's, uh, I think uh, this cooperation, this partnership is an example for others to follow. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's go, let's move to another block. Now we are going to call Dr. Nizia Yamaguchi and Regina Bu, Marcia Regina Bu from Brazil. So we are going to from Europe to South America. Hello. Uh, Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. It's very nice to be together with PW and Marcia Bu, that works also for Rotary in Brazil and now BPW. And I believe very much in partnerships, so Dr. Dolores, it's a privilege to be together and uh, let's make it happen. I, I would like to share my screen. We, we did um, a publication in English about breast cancer, and that was very important because we could launch that in New York at the meeting, and we were able to um, give for free 
the book. And uh, in the book, we talk a little bit about several issues about biomarkers, liquid biopsy, cancer prevention, early detection, cancer research and treatment personalization. And this book, it was written here under the organization of Mrs. Marcia Bull, Dr. Marcia Bull. She is the lawyer that uh, who wanted to do this uh, kind of educational approach. And the scope of our publication had a focus on the importance of breast cancer, early detection, and treatment personalization. And it was based on the specific driver mutation of each individual case of breast tumor. And this book is aimed at the general population and the non-medical health professionals. We also deem it important to familiarize the readers with the value of clinical trials and the access opportunities they offer to patients to receive the most advanced treatments, such as molecular uh, target drugs and cancer immunotherapies. So we uh, had several chapters, what is breast cancer, radiological diagnosis, mammography, ultrasound, many different uh, approaches like MRI, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, lymph node image, guided biopsy, many treatments for breast cancer, the breast cancer survival, life quality and nutrition, contribution of UNACAN, that's the network for patients. And so uh, we talked about types of clinical studies and how they can help you, like an umbrella trial. Uh, we, we have different issues and so the basket trial as well. So if it's facing, what is the clinical trial? So if it's facing three clinical trials, they accept patients living in different countries around the world, not to, to have to leave the city in the study if it's a shoe open or it's recruiting at a local hospital or research center. Your doctor can consult the US NCI website, clinicaltrials.gov. It lists all the clinical trials that are recruiting patients or have recently started, showing a description of the trial as well, type of treatment and criteria for patient's inclusion in this study. In Brazil, we, we do have uh, some clinical trials, but not that many. And normally it's, uh, it's something that's rare, but we need to improve the access of patients to clinical trials. If the clinical criteria match, you'll be accepted and your doctor will advise you on how to proceed. Have the consultation with the doctor responsible for this study and then in person via teleconference. And this study will send the medication, therapeutic protocols, and will cover the cost of drugs. This is very important because sometimes the drug is very expensive, it's not available yet, and this gives the possibility for patients that they will receive something that is new, that is promising, and uh, the study will access the safety and efficacy of the treatment in previous phases. So breast cancer uh, has possible multiple mutations, which varies among tumors of the same type, whereas they may share the same mutations with different types of tumors. For instance, a semi driver mutation may, may be present in a lung tumor patient and in a breast cancer patient. If the later is the case, the same cancer drug may be efficacious to both patients. Therefore, the same treatments that overcome such strategy will be beneficial to patients with different tumor types as long as their tumors have the same driver mutations. In this case, the type of driver mutation is a biomarker that will predict the type of medication to be prescribed. So this is what we call precision medicine. We try to find out the mutation and try to give the treatment regarding that mutation. And biomarkers are molecules present in tumor cells which play a special role in tumor formation, development, and survival. And some biomarkers are predictors of metastasis, 
that as others may promote resistance to treatment, disease progression, or tumor vascularization, etc. And some of these biomarkers may be potential targets to new drugs development, whereas others have a diagnostic or prognostic value. During cancer treatment, tumors undergo new mutations and often develop new survival strategies by activating different mechanisms, such as secretion of immune response. Yes? Sorry to, to interrupt you, but I think your presentation is not going on. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And also, it would be better to put in a presentation mode because it's stoppage. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Now, are you looking at that? Can you see? Yes, we can, but not in presentation mode. Yes. But for example, okay, but now you can see. Yes. Okay. But I think you need to, yeah, you need to click on, okay? Okay. Other, so, otherwise, it's going to be stoppage in only one slide. Okay, so this is the book we had, and then this is the chapter, the content overview, and then the kinds of uh, studies that we have, what we have to know about clinical trials and personalized treatment. As I said, you, you may have different mutations that can treat patients. And also, uh, you have to look at cancer biomarkers. Claudia, are you seeing my slides right now? Yeah, they can see it. Okay. And yeah. then I, I will I would like to talk. Change. Yeah. Would you like to talk a little bit about liquid biopsy? Liquid biopsy is a biopsy done in the blood and plasma that transports cancer cells, fragments of cells, tumor-associated molecules, and free cellular DNA, as well as immune cells that would have been activated by cancer cells. All this information treasure through can be accessed by simply collecting blood from peripheral veins or further analysis and the identification of new mutations and several types of biomarkers. This is related to tumor cells, they are of great importance for oncology due to their prognostic value. They detach from the primary tumor, circulate through the bloodstream, and can initiate metastatic spread to other organs. So, in 2019, we did a pilot study where we collected samples from different patients and we isolated CTCs using enrichment protocols for cytometry, cells with subculture, and then we treated with different chemotherapeutic drugs. So it was like a chemogram. So we could see which kinds of drugs could be active for that patient. It was very interesting, we presented that at the ACR uh, in a publication, and that was a moment where the world was starting talking about that. And members of samples by cancer types, several were from breast cancer patients. And the results, we put to the genetic profiling of CTCs that shows that genes in the collected samples had several mutations, either decreasing inhibiting gene activity or abnormally increasing certain genes. So it's very important because we put retrieve information from the blood about the DNA of the tumor cells. And the information provided by the bulbases were used to design personalized treatments to the enrolled uh, patients of the study. So it was very important because CTCs are very important for the scientific and medical community. The profiling might be the key for predicting response to therapy as well as for monitoring the progression of the disease. And analysis of a wide spectrum of genes and proteins correlated with crucial biological procedures usage in clinical level. They allow and inform a choice of specific strategies according to each individual's tumor. 
a well-informed therapeutic plan based on biomarkers assessment saves lives, prevents inefficacy, and improves clinical response, and even predict cancer risks in a time to halt and revert an ongoing carcinogenic process. So it was very important to highlight this kind of personalized treatment. But in the book, we could speak also about common issues like mammography, MRI, and also staging processes. We think that education is key. We can bring more information to patients and we are there to help them out with their disease. And immunotherapy is now one of the pivotal uh, treatments for patients with triple negative breast cancer. But we do have monoclonal antibodies against HER2 um, breast cancers. And we do have also treatments available for many different issues. So I think that it's really something very important that we can uh, talk to patients in some way that they achieve more information in, them, in their treatment and their disease. And it will be more and more important that we widespread this information around the world. Thank you. And now, Marcia, will you speak a little bit about our partnership, Marcia Bull? You are mute. Uh, Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank, um, especially for the invitation to participate as a speaker in this webinar. It is a great honor to be part of this international webinar among very important women who makes a difference in their communities and their in their professions and uh, in the world as a consequence. Thank you very much. I am a brand new member of BPW and I had an honor to participate as well because the focus of my talk is the importance of uh, the partnership among organizations and to expose the results of uh, the partnership agreement that we signed among BPW Sao Paulo and the Hotter Club uh, uh, Sao Paulo Butantan, both organizations have uh, capillarity in our communities and in the world as well. Cooperation is an essential practice for the development and growth of individuals, organizations, and societies as a whole. Uh, I will explain uh, you the cooperation and partnership that uh, stand out in the effectiveness and positive impact and ability to promote solidarity and teamwork among our organizations. This happened and uh, is in effect among the international NGOs, local BPW and local Rotary, with some other groups of volunteers. The cooperation among uh, organizations can be a powerful tool to achieve common goals and overcome challenges and collabor collaboratively. I a way to work together to achieve common goals. Uh, we did a teamwork. Uh, a group of people came together to accomplish a task together, contributing each one with their own skills and knowledge to achieve the common goal that was to uh, write, to publish, and to launch two books, one about breast cancer and the other about uh, prostate cancer, as well uh, a big event for women uh, in March, and then also uh, to launch uh, the same book that was launched in Brazil about breast cancer, to launch it in English in New York. So uh, we did an international cooperation as well with the volunteer work, with the crowdsourcing, because we, we took a, a, a very uh, effort to, to have the monies 
to publish both uh, publication and afterwards at the third publication, and also to accomplish the event for women with uh, round tables, with uh, speeches, with certificates, and also awards. Uh, it's also uh, with our case of the partnership between BPW and Pottery Club Sao Paulo, we carried out in only seven months of voluntary work, the two books written by volunteer, uh, renowned PhD doctors, experts, published and launched in several places and events in the whole Brazil, in various states and in various organizations. Uh, that uh, thousands of women, patients, physicians, medical students, as well as nursing schools and technicians, they took the opportunity to have the books for free. Breast cancer, what you need to know in Portuguese, Prostate cancer, what you need to know. The books aim to enlighten the general public about prevention, early diagnosis, available treatments, and recent scientific discoveries that can help in deciding on paths to be followed by the patients. And we did more. We carry out together both NGOs, BPW and Pottery. Uh, an internet, the International Women's Event held in Sao Paulo on March 16, in celebration of the Women's Month. The name of the event was Scent of Woman Award, meaning to, to treat the essence of women in general and uh, to give award to women that did the difference in their, their communities and in the world. And then we did also the breast cancer, what you did to know in English, launched in New York on the Women's Day at the successful BPW event in USA. The books are being translated now into Italian to be released soon. Uh, again, we will reproduce the same uh, uh, books with the next new uh, scientists' discoveries the, with improvements in October, in, no, in November, this in, in Sao Paulo. And uh, now we are also uh, thinking in creating, creating a support network for groups of people and uh, to do more and more webinars like this and uh, lectures to improve the knowledge and to diffuse the knowledge we uh, have the opportunity to gather in those publications. To end uh, our Three minutes, talk. Marcia. Yes, okay. I will read uh, just a Three phrase. Minutes. Well, the great philosophers, uh, Immanuel Kant, to inspire us all to continue to act in support of our causes, especially breast cancer and women's development, development with equity. Many souls are so compassionately disposed that without any other motive or vanity or self-interest, they find an inner pleasure in spreading joy around them. And that's all, Immanuel Kant. This is from 1785, the year of this phrase, and is totally updated to, know, to us now. <laughs> we can apply this knowledge of uh, altruism now give us a, a very strong power to women to be altruist and to accomplish uh, some goals for all. Thank you very much. Margarida, you are muted. And also we can see you. You vanished. So oh, thank you, What's Marcia. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Nizi. 
I don't know what happened with Margarida, but I think she's trying to get back. Maybe we can take the questions if there are, Claudia. Yeah, so I'm going to take the opportunity to remind you all who is watching and here with us. So please, if you have any questions or some compliments also, write down on the Q&A questions and answers. Okay. Uh, I can see, so Dolores Itanez is a BPW Ecuador president. It's congratulations, congratulating you, Dr. Nisi and Marcia, especially Dr. Nisi, because she had the opportunity to meet you here in Sao Paulo, Dr. Nisi. Brian Javier also is congratulating and saying that is very important to this kind of a webinar. Olga um, Armada from BPW Argentina, the president of BPW Argentina also is congratulating. Um, Kelly Talon, she's from the traffic the committee, UN committee with me, also they are congratulating. So dears, uh, if you have any question, please write down here and I can read out to them, okay? Right after, some of them, okay. So I think, I don't know if you have, uh, as you have some more, five minutes maybe, or three minutes in fact. You know, if we can proceed with the juicy or there's some something to add in this uh, researches and presentations. Dolores, can you say something about it? Or add something in your research in your Something that's very important to them. You are muted. You're unmuted now. Hello, this, please. Yeah. The floor is. Hello, no, 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 I'm fine. I just wanted to see if, I don't know if my colleague, our colleague from Sparkle University has joined, but I don't know if she's behind the Maria Sample official, because I wanted to, to introduce you to her, but I'm not getting any answers, but I'm not certain. Okay. So, Dolores, you are unmuted. Oh, okay. Dolores from Ecuador is asking if uh, they could implement the project in in Ecuador, Dr. Nisi? Yes, I think that it's uh, still not possible because uh, we we need resource to do that. But in the future, yes, we can try to do it together. Okay, great. Someone from Maria Sampo. So if if you were getting the webinar by the link, the name is Maria Sample, please, after you write your question or your congratulating, please send us your real name <laughs> because this is the way that we found to send you the link and help you to get to get in, okay? Uh, Rosie, Rosie Godoy, also the São Paulo, BPW São Paulo president, is congratulating especially our members, Dr. Nisi, Margarida, and Marcia Bu, and I. I'm from São Paulo also. Uh, let me see if there is something else. So, uh, I think we could proceed. Juicy, I think this is your time. And okay. uh, if they have any more question or, you know, compliments, I can, I can read uh, after you, okay? Okay. And please see if Margarida is, is there trying to come in. 
Can you see if Margarida is there trying to come in? Not, no, not Margarita. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed, and then I can okay. I can try Margarida. Okay. To see if okay. the floor is yours. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to all the participants. I would like to thank the speakers for their excellent and inspiring presentations in this webinar co-organized by BPW San Paulo Brazil, BPW Madrid Spain, with the support of BPW International. The webinar highlighted the collaboration between BPW San Paulo, BPW Madrid, Rotary Butanta, and now Universidad Complutense Madrid. The goal is to promote best practices, scientific research, and the dissemination of information on advantaged medications and treatment for breast cancer, a disease impacting women worldwide. Oh. They, are, they are united by shared goals and mutual benefits. Today, our main goal is to develop and support breast cancer projects in the medium and long term. I would like to thank the participants for their contributions, ideas, discussions. Without them, the web, this webinar would not have been as successful as it was. I will not repeat the comprehensive presentations of our speakers. I will share my personal view of the problem. Thank you, Margarita Yasuda. The, uh, she giving me the opportunity to participate in this project. BPW International is dedicated to promoting women's health and I am honored to be the vice president membership. In my opinion, information and communication are essential to promote prevention. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women of all ages. In fact, it is estimated that one in eight women will develop the disease in her lifetime. However, thanks to the continued medical advantages and increased knowledge about the disease, the prognosis for these women and men is improving significantly. Prevention is a right a duty for all, as stated in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. All by starting with the prevention can we defeat major diseases such as breast cancer. The collaboration with Rotary Club Butanta San Paolo, BPW San Paolo, and the INGO Institute is crucial. They have realized a lot of activities, a lot of books on breast cancer as breast cancer prevention and research, particularly breast cancer, what you need to know. This book will help women take care of themselves and society as a whole. The goal is to raise awareness in a clear and concise manner about the critical importance of early diagnosis for disease that can be effectively cured when detected early. I supported the English translation of the book to make it accessible to all women around the world. I want to take care of the health and education for our sisters in the world. I am also promoting the translation of the book into Italian with the help of a friend my friend, president of an association that promotes cancer prevention. 
Thank you to Pazzi Martin, President of BPW Madrid. We have a new strategic partnership with the Complutense University of Madrid to promote research on this disease. Their project, very innovative project, the development of hydrogels through 3D printing for the treatment and prophylaxis of breast cancer. It's very innovative. We, with this project, they will research 3D printing of hydrogels to be controlled the post-tumor resection that can inhibit the growth of any remaining cancer cells and reducing the risk of metastasis. The metastasis is the very big problem in this disease. This is a very strategic partnership, establishing a collaborative alliance between organizations to develop and support the project in the medium and long term. I am confident that the objective is e expected results of the partnership are well defined and that it will be effective, sustainable and successful. A clear and transparent communication is essential as is a commitment to long term action. This partnership is clear in its willingness to share ideas and expertise to achieve a common goals. It is committed to combining efforts, cooperation, understanding, and knowledge sharing to effect, uh, efficiently achieve results. It is a powerful example of an incredible effective social marketing strategy. This partnership is very important to achieve our goals. These two projects and their respective partners must be promoted to improve the health and the quality of the life for women worldwide. The quality of the life is very, very important. And I think it is our duty, strategic partnership, must also be promoted globally. We have, can promote this partnership. I would also like to remind you of our international team, New Actions Through Cooperation. This is a great example of cooperation. Thank you all for the participating in this webinar and thank you to all the speakers for all very great support and very innovative knowledge. Thank you. You are muted, Margarita. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Claudia, for your technical support and Ursula also. Well, as you have seen, I had problem <laughs> with my internet. <laughs> It's it happens. I miss good notice, and then I yeah. I take place. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank and you for your help. The webinar, and, no problem. Uh, Giuseppina, our vice president, she told she brought us uh, a lot of information on how a partnership should work. Yes. It's very important if, uh, how to develop a good partnership. It's not a partnership on the paper, in the paper, but in practice, how we can work together with different organizations. Now we have two examples with a good objective that can bring benefit for women. So we have BPW uh, Madrid with a university, University Complutense de Madrid, with a research. And then we have uh, BPW Sao Paulo with Pottery, two traditional organizations that are together for the same goal, bring benefit for women. Talk about health, talk about research, innovative treatment and medications. That's very important. 
only with partnership, with co collaboration among organizations, we can bring more benefit for women. We should be all together. Of course, in a partnership, we have some obstacles that we have to face. So uh, a partnership for one action is very easy. What, what we propose here is to have partnership for long term to develop projects, not only one project, but other projects among BPW and other institutions. And it's a big challenge for us. I know that sometimes even between us, we have problem is communication. We should have much more patient tolerance and think about sisterhood. That's the point. Accept the difference to get our goals. Now we, here, we have here a good example. And I hope all, all of you who are here think about it and develop a project, develop partnership with big organizations. So uh, it will be a new step to put this partnership in practice projects in practice, okay? So you, what Shujapina told us today is very important. And uh, uh, I would like now to thank everyone who are here with us to be with us in this project. And thank you so much for attending and uh, all our panelists. Doctora Dolores, Dr. Nisi, and uh, Marcia Regina, and uh, Giuseppina, and our president, who are very far but with us in five minutes or give her, her, give her message, and uh, Ursula and Claudia Pirani for great job giving us her technical, uh, technical support. Okay, and uh, hopefully we can have another webinars or workshops and uh, ve very soon bring in more information and sharing knowledge with all these uh, panelists. Okay, thank you so much for everyone and be safe.